Hello everyone, welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to solve the last four problems from paper two. So the first paragraph is based on Young's double slit experiment. And each of the two slits A and B, as shown in the figure, are oscillating about their fixed center with a mean separation of 0.8. The distance between the slits as a function of time is given by this function. So as you can see, if you take the average, the sine term will be zero and you'll get the mean as 0.8 mm. So D is fluctuating with an angular frequency of 0.08. The distance of the screen from the slits is one meter and the wavelength of light used is 6,000 angstroms. The interference pattern on the screen changes with time while the central bright fringe remains fixed at point O. Okay, so the central bright fringe will obviously be at point O guys because by symmetry point O will always have zero path difference right okay guys so the y coordinate of the nth maxima from the point O is actually n lambda capital D by small d okay and as we are interested in the eighth maxima this would be eight lambda d divided by small d so this is the y coordinate of the eighth maxima so now the question what they're asking is the eighth bright fringe above the point O oscillates with time between two extreme positions the separation between these two extreme positions in micrometers is Okay guys, so now the, if you observe the y-coordinate, the only variable quantity that can change this y-coordinate is, is small d, which is a slit separation. So the thing is the extremes will also be decided by the extremes of small d. The minimum value of the eighth maxima is going to be 8 lambda d divided by d max and the max value is just going to be 8 lambda d divided by d min and we want to figure out what is the distance between these two extreme positions okay so now the function for d is given to be 0 0.8 plus 0 0.04 sine of omega t so d min is going to be 0.8 minus 0 0.04 which is 0 0.76 and then d max is going to be 0 0.84 okay so once you substitute all the values in guys you will get the answer as 601.5 micrometers now if you assume these two as 0 0.8 mm then the answer turns out to be 600 micrometers okay and even 600 was given under the right answer in the provisional key okay so another approach to this could be that uh, we can apply first order approximation the y coordinate is 8 lambda d divided by d and the function of d i'm going to write it over here so it'll be 0 0.8 plus 0 0.04 sine of omega t. So now if I take 0 0.8 common from the denominator, then this becomes 1 plus 4 divided by 80, which is 1 by 20. So now the thing is guys, the uh, magnitude of this term is much less in comparison to 1. So we can use a uh, binomial approximation here. Okay guys, so now what we're going to do is, now this is 0 0.8 uh, mm so we have to convert it into meters okay, so now i'm taking if i take this to the numerator guys i can raise it to the power of minus one so this becomes six thousand and applying the first order approximation this becomes one minus sine omega t by 20. so basically this is just simple harmonic motion about y equals six thousand micrometer so this becomes six thousand minus three hundred sine of omega t so let's say this is y equals zero and this is y equals 6,000 micrometers. At this particular point, the eighth maxima is performing SHM with an amplitude of 300 micrometer and with an angular frequency of omega. Okay, so the amplitude of SHM is 300 micrometers. And uh, from here also, you can see that the extremes, distances between the extremes is 600 micrometer, which is pretty close to 601.5, right? Now, in the second question, they're saying, what is the maximum speed in the corresponding motion? And that maximum speed will be achieved when coordinate is at the mean position. And at the mean position, we know that the speed is A omega. So that'll be 300 micrometers multiplied by the omega, which is 0 0.08. And this turns out to be 24 micrometers per second. Okay, so using the first order approximation, we'll get the answer as 24. And now if you want the exact value, then you will have to use calculus. So we know the general value of y, right? So we will, so you would have to find out dy by dt. So the RHS would become eight lambda d by d squared times the time derivative of d. And then you have to find out the maxima of that function because they are asking us about the maximum speed. Okay guys, so this is the calculus approach. So I differentiated the function y. So this will be the velocity of the y coordinate. And now basically after substituting all the values in, make sure you don't make a mistake in terms of conversion guys. So d is in mm. So we have to multiply by 10 power minus six here. This is also mm. So we have to multiply by 10 power minus three. That's why I wrote a thousand over here. Uh, we'll get the function of the speed as this particular value. And the thing is, as you can see, there is a cos omega t in the numerator and a sine omega t in the denominator. So the maxima of this expression, we can kind of feel it. It'll be when cos cos omega t achieves its maximum value, sine omega t becomes zero. So basically we have to divide by 0 0.64 and the an if you do it, the answer comes out to be exactly 24 micrometers per second. So, so even using the calculus approach, you get the exact same answer. So yeah, that's the answer to this question. So now let's move on to the next paragraph. Okay guys, so uh, this is the last problem of the paper. So this question is from, you could say center of mass and collisions. So we have two particles, one and two, both of them have the same mass and they're connected by a massless spring. Okay, and they're placed on a horizontal frictionless plane. 
Initially, the two particles with their center of mass at x0, so the coordinate of the CM is given to be x0, are oscillating with an amplitude of a and angular frequency of omega. So their positions as a function of time is given by x1 and x2. So x1, uh, basically what this is, is like the CM's coordinate is x0, and let's say the spring is in its natural length, so this distance is going to be d, and this ball is performing SHM, and its equation is a sine omega t. So this is what this equation means. Okay, so the coordinate is x0 plus d, plus a sin omega t. And similarly, you can uh, write it for the other mass as well. So now they've given that d is greater than 2a, so that we can alternately write as a less than d by 2. So the amplitude of either of the balls is less than half the value of d, so the amplitude is going to be less than this value. Now it's given that a particle 3 with the same mass is moving towards this system with a speed of a omega by 2 and undergoes instantaneous elastic collision with the second particle at time t naught. Finally, particles 1 and 2 acquire a center of mass speed of Vcm and oscillate with an amplitude of b and the same angular frequency of omega. So after the collision, obviously the velocity of the center of mass will change because we are providing an impulse externally and, uh, and then it will oscillate with a different value of amplitude. Now in the first question, they are saying if the collision occurs at time t equal to 0, then what is the value of Vcm by a omega? So we have to analyze the situation at time t equal to 0. So if we put time t equal to 0 over here, you can see that the coordinate of ball 2 is x0 plus d which and similarly the coordinate of this guy you can figure out it is going to be x0 minus d which basically means a spring is in its natural length. So now if you differentiate this uh, you'll get a omega cos omega t so its initial velocity will be a omega towards the right. Now obviously the center of mass is at rest so this guy's velocity will be a omega towards the left. So now the collision is about to happen. So guys now I'm going to use a result from mechanics. If we have two equal masses that are approaching each other uh, with some velocity v1 and v2 and let's say v1 is greater than v2 and if the collision is elastic then after collision their velocities will get exchanged. What that means is this guy will now have a velocity of v2 and this guy will have a velocity of v1. So we can actually prove this really, uh, very quick. So e equal to 1 tells us that the separation velocity equal to the approach velocity. Now the approach velocity is v1 minus v2. So separation also should be v1 minus v2. So what I'm going to do is, so let's say the velocity of the first mass becomes v. So the velocity of the second mass must be v1 minus v2 plus v. And, and why is that? Because the separation velocity should be v1 minus v2, right? So if you subtract these two velocities, you should get v1 minus v2. So now we'll just conserve momentum. So the initial momentum is m v1 plus v2. Uh, and final momentum is m v plus v1 minus v2 plus v. So as you can see, the v1 vector cancels out on both sides. So from here, v2 vector turns out to be equal to v vector. So what that means is this guy's velocity, the first mass's velocity is v2 and the second mass's velocity is v1, exactly what our claim was. So using this result, we can say after the collision of particles 3 and 2, particle 1 will, will run away with the velocity of a omega and particle 2 will get the initial velocity of particle 3, which was a omega by 2 towards the right. So this is the situation right after collision. Okay, so now the velocity of the center of mass is nothing but the net momentum divided by the mass and that is uh, m a omega plus m a omega by 2 which is 3 m a omega by 2 uh, this divided by the okay this should be the total mass right and the total mass of the system is 2 m so this becomes 3 by 4 a omega so they wanted the value of this particular coefficient over here that would be 0 0.75 okay now second question the time is slightly different they're saying the time of collision is pi by 2 omega so now let's go back to the original situation. So this was a omega by 2. Now as a time period of SHM for both the masses is 2 pi by omega. So pi by 2 omega means one fourth of the oscillation. So, so basically both masses uh, reach their extreme position and now both of their velocities would simultaneously become zero. Okay, so how much did this spring extend by guys? So, so ball number one moved towards the right by a, ball number two moved towards the left by a. So the extension in the spring delta x is two times a. So now these two balls are going to collide and again their velocities are going to be exchanged. So this ball will come to rest and this ball will move towards the right with a velocity of a omega by 2. Now guys, in this situation, obviously the center of mass will have some velocity. This situation is best visualized in the center of mass frame, right? Because in the center of mass, both the balls will be performing simple harmonic motion and it will be symmetric about the center of mass, right? So we'll use the center of mass frame here. So the velocity of the center of mass is again the net momentum, which is m a omega by 2 in this case, divided by the total mass. So this comes out to be a omega by 4. Now we'll subtract a omega by 4 from both the balls to get their velocities in the center of mass frame. 
So this ball will move towards the right with a omega by 4 and this ball will move towards the left with a omega by 4. So initially guys both the balls had zero velocity in this situation right. Now they suddenly gained a velocity of a omega by 4. So let's observe this ball over here. Now guys the mean position is still the original position because that just means the point where the extension in the spring is zero. But the amplitude is not going to be a anymore because this is not the extreme position anymore right. The extreme position will be somewhere over here where the speed is zero. Now as a velocity as a function of x for a spring block system, if you guys remember it was omega under root of a squared minus x squared, right? So this, so this is the mean position. Initially the mass is at a distance of a from it and its speed is a omega by 4. So instead of v we will put a omega by 4 and instead of x we will put a and amplitude in this case is given to be b, right? And that's what we have to solve for. This is equal to omega under root of b square minus a squared. So omega we can just cancel out. And now if we square on both sides, we'll get, and we wanted the value of 4b squared by a squared. So that is 17 divided by 4. And the answer comes out to be 4.25. Okay. So the answer to this question will be 4.25. So yeah, that was all the problems from the paper, guys. If you have any doubts, you can comment down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. And that's it. Thanks for watching.